This is one of the most dangerous faults that any color television ever had, and in fact, this particular fault resulted in multiple fires back in the 1980s. Zenith actually settled a lawsuit because several people died when their house burnt up after their TV caught fire. Let's take a look at this fault. So today I have this RCA color TV. The sound. And we have no horizontal deflection on this set. Now I can tell you what it's not. It's not going to be the flyback transformer. It's not going to be the horizontal output transistor or any of the horizontal drive circuitry because if it was, we wouldn't have anything. We wouldn't have any type of light and we wouldn't have sound and we wouldn't have all the high voltage and all the other voltages because they're all derived from the flyback transformer. So we know that the horizontal output is working. So what we might have on here is we may have a bad yoke or we may have a component that's failed in the horizontal deflection circuit other than the flyback transformer and other than the horizontal output. So one of the capacitors may have failed, uh, linearity coil could have failed, could it be the yoke, um, or it could be a broken connection that's driving the yoke. But uh, anyway, oh, see that? Now, what does that tell you? Did you see what it just did? I saw I saw a bit of deflection. So right there, that's telling me that the problem is probably a broken connection somewhere in the horizontal circuit. So, a horizontal deflection circuit. So I'm gonna take the back off this unit and we're gonna get in there and try and isolate it by just tapping around the board and see if we can find it. And maybe I'll even use some test equipment and we'll look at the, we'll look at the, the uh, signal, see if it's setting and getting to the yoke first of all. So since I don't have a mirror handy, the camera does as good a job as anything. Let's just see if I tap around in here, whether I can just using the insulated end of a screwdriver in the horizontal section here. Your plug. Oh. By George, I'm in the area. This is a linearity coil. Now, I'm sticking my hand in where I sh probably shouldn't because this is where the highest of the voltages are in this set about a thousand volts peak to peak so if you're going to do this make sure first of all you've got insulated footwear on and make sure that your second hand is not anywhere where electricity can exit your body that way if you get a shock you're not going to get electrocuted so the safest thing to do is put your other hand in your pocket so that it can't touch anything that's grounded and then I can, I can stick my finger in here and I can just start wiggling parts around like I'm showing what I'm touching here. Now, look at the front of the screen. You guys can't see it, but I can. I can see a reflection. Oh, interesting. Watch what happens when I touch this capacitor. I'll show you the screen. I do believe this is going to be one of the fastest repairs I've ever done. I didn't even get a chance to get out of the test gear, but I do believe that we have a problem right in this area here. You can actually hear it arcing. Okay, take a listen to this. Houston, I think we have a fire. Oh, yes! We have sparks! We have magic smoke, and we have fire whoa I think we have a problem here it's gonna kill the power before I blow this set up but um, yeah I think we're gonna find out when I pull the board out that this connection here has burned underneath this you still see the smoke there underneath this capacitor it's all burnt now that's gonna be the problem on this set nice easy fix and you know we get lucky though sometimes because sometimes we get these really easy ones and this is one of them 
and sometimes we get some really difficult ones. This is actually quite common because in this circuit, this is the high voltage circuit, the horizontal, it's a pulse, and it's, well, we'll, we'll look at it. I'm going to fix the connection on here first before I turn the set on because this actually can blow the output trans, uh, transistor when it's arcing like that, so I don't want to... I don't want to make it burn anymore than I have to. Plus, it could set the circuit board on fire. There was a number of fires um, caused in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, on Zenith televisions when the horizontal linearity coil, which I'll show you which one that is. Okay, the horizontal linearity coil is this one right here. And on a number of Zenith System 3 televisions in the I guess it was the late early 80s when they when they moved the plant to Mexico so that would have been the early 80s but there was a, a lot of failures of solder connections on the horizontal uh, linearity coil on these system 3 televisions that Zenith was, was putting out and the, the big problem was on those sets the, the circuit board was mounted uh, vertically like this so there was high voltage exposed. So to protect a serviceman who might be sticking his hand in the set, what they did is they put a piece of, for lack of better terms, paper. It was supposed to be treated fireproof, but it wasn't fireproof enough. It was, uh, I think it was uh, a type of, it was almost like a, like a fiberglass paper type card. It looked like a piece of cardboard, but it wasn't. It was it was kind of, it had fibers in it, maybe asbestos coated or something. Anyway, um, it wasn't as fireproof as it was supposed to be. And it, it caught on fire on some sets. And, uh, well, I, I, it, it caused a couple houses to go up. And it caused a couple people to die in those houses. So uh, Zenith admitted to having a faulty design and paid an undisclosed sum of money. We still don't know how much Zenith paid because the uh, documents were sealed. But they recalled thousands upon thousands of these sets to change the horizontal deflection board. And the replacement board had a different type of material. First of all, they beefed up the solder on them. We were seeing them fail prior to the sets bursting into flames. We were seeing them fail. But some of the sets I would get and the board was all charred. I have a feeling that we're going to find some charring in here. This is the, you can see how loose this thing is. This is the one that's come loose on this set. So I'm going to pull the board out of this thing and uh, we'll see how bad this one is. Just to unplug the yoke plugs. They're glued in place with hot glue. Okay, yes, my power is off, by the way. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, check that out. Just a little bit toasty. <laughs> there it is. There is the problem. Now on the zeniths that burst into flames, it was right here. It was the horizontal linearity. And you can see this is connected to the horizontal linearity coil. This is the return, right? The, the uh, yoke is here. So here's your horizontal output going to the, the flyback. And the flyback goes directly over to the yoke, as you can see here. So pin two. This will go to the horizontal output transistor, which is right here. There's a capacitor across here as well. And here's the yoke. And it goes through the yoke. And then it goes back through the horizontal linearity coil. And then into this capacitor, which the connection has failed and it's burned. Even the other side. Look at the side here. It's even, it's even kind of wiggly. A little bit too close, but you can see. Anyway, let's... Uh, solder that one up and uh, that should fix this set I don't know why I'm fixing this TV it was just kind of it was given to me because this TV doesn't even have an auxiliary input so a lot of these old small TVs that I get I can sell 
because they're good for video games. They're good for the old video games. But everybody wants one with an AV input. And this set doesn't have it. So I guess I'll have to bundle up a, a modulator with this set if I'm going to try and sell this one. Or maybe we'll just use this one for some more study. I mean, look, some of these other connections don't look so swift here, even on this flyback transformer. Let's get the iron heated up to temperature here. Okay, that should fix this one. I don't know what the idea behind the hot glue was. I guess they had a problem with the... They must have had a problem with the connectors working their way loose. And that was a fix. It was, well, we'll just, we'll just put some hot snot on there. And that'll stop the connector from coming loose. That was typically the way that they did things. Half-assed. Okay, that's back there. And analog signal. Actually, it's a hybrid signal because this cable has the analog uh, signals that I generate in house. But it also has the ATSC digital off-air signals. Okay, power. I got sound. So it's working. There we go. This is fixed. Color bars. See, I have my color bars on channel 40 for testing. There we go, that's another one saved from the scrap heap. So that's that. Now we're gonna see this TV again. I'm gonna plant a fault in it before I even put it back together. Well, we're gonna use this as a as a, a test set and I'll do some damage to it. I'll plant some faults in this thing and then show you the different faults that uh, we can figure out what's wrong with it. Maybe put some missing color or, you know, or luminance or something something like that. We'll do something with this set. This will kind of be a little experimenting set for a while before I get rid of it. So anyway, thanks for watching. This one's now back in a working condition so that I can play around with it. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.